folks. Welcome to another We Need a Saga test ride. Today I'm going to be talking to you about this, the Ducati Super Sport. This is Ducati's idea of a sports touring sort of bike, if you like. So think like Kawasaki Ninja 1000, uh, Honda VFR, that sort of idea. So you've still got a nice, revvy, sporty engine. You've got more upright seating, a little bit more wind protection, with the idea being you don't lose much of that sporting performance, but you do gain a bit of comfort and a bit of uh, long range ability. So if you've not seen one of my test ride videos before, what I do, I borrow the bike from the dealership for about half an hour. I take it for a ride and give you my first impressions. So I'll talk about how I like the engine, the suspension, ergonomics, livability, all of that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in the Ducati Supersport, stay tuned and I'll take you over the bike. Okay, one of the things I'm already in love with on this bike is the way it sounds. So get a load of this start up. Alrighty, let's get going on the Super Sport. Alright, stupidly hot day, can't wait to get moving. Woo! Alright, before I get started talking about the Super Sport, a big thank you to Sydney City Motorcycles right here in Lane Cove for lending me the bike and giving me the opportunity to do these reviews. They're the ones that make these possible. So if you enjoy the review, be sure to give it a like, give it a thumbs up, because they do watch the videos and it helps a lot if you support them. So thanks again. Ducati Super Sport. Now, the first thing I should probably mention before we go much further is, I'm not just on any old Ducati Super Sport, I'm on the Super Sport S with the fully optioned Acura exhaust system, which immediately, just gives you an amazing first impression of this bike. I'll slice in my um, high quality sound clip shortly to give you a feel for what it properly sounds like. But trust me, when you're on the bike right now, you've got the beautiful thump of a Ducati V-Twin and that Acura just brings it to life. And it's not, it's not annoying, it's not, uh, droney, it's just a beautiful hum. And I love it. So what's the basic formula for this bike? Well, Ducati wanted it to be more tractable, so the Panigale range with the Super Quadros, they're big over-square engines, they need lots of revs, and they're really at their best when they get above sort of six or seven thousand rpm i'll come back to that in a second because this is a good opportunity to accelerate onto the highway so here we go great pickup yeah so back to the engine quickly ducati wanted something more tractable so instead of putting that big old Super Quadro engine in there, which is very much designed for track use. They've taken the 930 engine, which they use in the Hyper Motard. I think it's in the Multistrada 950 now as well. But it's a more, I wouldn't say a mild-mannered engine, because it's definitely still got plenty of poke, as we just saw. But it's a more street-focused engine, right? So you get more torque, lower in the rev range which just makes it more tractable for street use. And yeah, you're down on top power compared to the Panigale, like Panigale 899, 959, they're in that sort of 140 to 150 horsepower range. This thing's more like 115 horsepower. But like I said, you, you, you're getting it earlier in the rev range, like that. And it just makes this kind of real world, if you'd call it that, like, you know, traffic use, easier. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me as a road bike. I think it's great. Oh, 
on the hum of that Acra is just glorious. You probably saw that in the opening shots. It's got the nice like MotoGP style, high, high slung twin pipes out the back of the bike. It looks cool and yeah, trust me, it sounds awesome. I'll, sp I'll stop talking about it. I'll splice it in here so you can get a feel for what it sounds like. The 937 Supersport S motor. Oh wow. Okay, so being an S model, there's a couple of other little goodies you get on it as well. So first one is a quick shifter. So if I accelerate, quick shift, no need for the gear lever. But the other great thing is it has an auto blipper as well. So here I am in third. If I just stomp on the gear lever, second, first, And I'm pleased to say, even on a new bike like this one, the action on it is really smooth. Up and down works exactly as you'd expect it to, really nice. You do also get with the S, fully adjustable Olin's suspension, which are not available on the regular Super Sport. They're not electronic, but as far as ride quality goes, man, it feels really nice at the moment. Firm, Ride's not too harsh, right in a good sweet spot. Wow, and we're already at the car park. This review is getting away from me very quickly because I'm enjoying it so damn much. So I'm gonna terrorize some small children here with this bloody ridiculous Acra. Um, what I do here in the car park is a slow speed U-turn. Just, it's like, you know, a usability type thing. Get a feel for how this behaves in the real world. So I'm just plodding along here at, at idle pretty much and I'm gonna try and do a u-turn here and there's more cars here than normal and I'm not feeling that confident but let's see how we go okay it's fair to say <laughs> part of the issue then was I don't want to drop a $20,000 Ducati so that's part of the reason I was a little little cautious on the old u-turn there but um yeah, it's definitely not like naked bike levels of like turning circle, right? You've The handlebars are not clip-ons. That's another one of the ways that they've made this bike more comfortable than the Panigale. The handlebars are raised and brought towards you a little bit to help with that seating position. But you're definitely not in like naked bike territory. It still feels a little bit compact and not as easy to turn around. But then all is forgiven <laughs> with the way it the way it feels and handles. Yeah, this is a cool, cool bike. Yeah, so I just touched on ergos there briefly. I will chuck a little video in that I got just before of me getting on the bike. And um, I mean, I'm not a very good test case because I'm very tall. I'm six foot six, so it's probably going to look smaller than it is for most of you. <laughs> But trust me when I say the, uh, the Super Sport is actually comfy to sit on. Um, leg room is good. And you have that upright seating position, like your back's very straight. You're not as crouched over as you would be on a Panigale. And so in terms of that all day comfort, it helps with that a lot. Another thing I'm interested to test out, and I'll do it around here when I'm sure I haven't got anyone behind me, Ducatis typically have very good brakes on them, so I'm pretty keen to see how it goes. So check my mirrors, nothing in my mirrors, stand on these brakes. Really good. Do you guys hear that? I've got a little bit of front wheel chirp, but I did lean on them pretty seriously, so what I will say is, the braking stability was amazing. Like, 
I didn't feel the front like trying to wiggle around in my hands. Same with the back, like so, so stable, so stable. And plenty of force through the lever, really good. So there's a big plus for the brakes. In terms of riding modes, power modes, you've got the three uh, that are pretty common on Ducati road bikes, which is like sport, touring, and urban. And each one modifies power, traction control, and ABS intervention. So the modes do a good job of giving you something that works in all conditions. Yeah, like sport mode is fine, even in like this kind of situation, like the throttle's not jerky, the throttle's just, you know, you pick it up from low revs like that. Like I know that used to be an issue with Ducatis of old was like the, the throttle pick up from really low revs was like quite, quite awkward. They've obviously done a lot of work on that because the fueling and the um, the pickup from very low up, very low revs is really good now. I love this sound. Oh my god! I'm being an urban pest. Oh, good overrun as well. Thank you, Ducati. All right, another acceleration test. <laughs> oh, this is a peach. Oh, you know the, the the Goldilocks analogy about like not too hot, not too cold, just right, blah blah blah. That's kind of what this bike is like. It's definitely not as fast as the 891 was, but you don't care because, like, on the road, the 899 was comically fast, like. That was part of the reason I got rid of it because you just couldn't really have any fun on it without going crazy levels over the speed limit, right? Whereas this thing is happy to chug along. Like I'm doing 60 k's in third gear at the moment. I'm doing like 3,000 RPM and it's happy to just lug along. But then, you know, you drop it back a gear with the uh, auto blipper. Wind on and you've got real world performance. So it's kind of a funny one, I guess, because if you look just at the sticker price, you're gonna go far out. This is an expensive bike for one that's only got 115 horsepower. But if you're sensible and think about where you're actually gonna use a bike like this, you think, you start to realize 115 horses is probably enough, you know? And let's face it, 115 is for a road bike. It definitely is. So yeah, I think Ducati have made a really sensible bike here, if that makes sense. Like, it's probably not gonna win you the bragging rights at, you know, at the cafe, but who cares? Like, that's not why you buy bikes, right? I'm actually going through a funny thought process at the moment, because I'm wondering if, if I'd had one of these instead of an 899, I'd probably still have the damn thing. <laughs> Because I've seen pictures of the, you know, accessories, catalogs and stuff. This bike you can make into a Tourer. You can put saddlebags on it. You can put a top box on it and take it, you know, 1,000, 2,000 Ks. Do a big long weekend on it. This screen is still, it's not what I'd call like genuine sports Tourer. Like if you were, if you're going to do some serious miles, you might want to look into a, a slightly bigger screen just to get that all day comfort happening. But I mean, that'd probably be the only thing, like the seat's nice and comfy. Um, yeah, like I said, the ergonomics are good. Like you sit with a pretty straight back and, you know, really comfy seating position with this raised yoke. And I think you guys get the idea. I think you, I think you understand that <laughs> I'm a fan of this bike. It's, um, it's a bit of a masterstroke. And I haven't had a chance to, you know, do a whole lot of windy roads with it, but from what limited experience I'm having at the moment, it doesn't feel like you're losing a whole lot of cornering performance either. There's still plenty of ground clearance here. You don't have like peg feelers or anything that are gonna stop you getting lean angle. There's plenty of room for sports riding here. One thing you do notice, and this seems to be fairly common with um, a lot of newer Ducatis, is the gearbox is definitely a bit tight at the moment, like finding neutral is. A bit of an exercise in patience at the moment. 
you are not going to sneak up on anyone with this uh, this exhaust. It's uh, pretty rowdy. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's hard to describe as well. It's obviously got something to do with the bore and stroke, but it's got a bit more of a thump to it than the Panigale did as well. It's it sounds a bit more V-twin. I know that sounds really stupid because the Panigale is obviously a V-twin as well, but yeah, it almost sounds a bit more bit more Ducati, whatever the hell that means. I know these um, these urban situations aren't particularly good for video, but they are a good test of the bike's manners in like urban low speed kind of situations. And what I will say is like the suspension's a bit on the firm side, like it's obviously set up for more sporty riding, but it still it still behaves fine, you know. You can do what you need to do. Oh, like this. I just realised I was in the wrong lane. So I'm fast approaching the end of this review. So a couple of concluding comments. What a what a cracking bike. This is like I was saying. This will suit somebody who doesn't need the track day performance of one of the super bikes but still really enjoys corner carving and weekend rides in the twisties. You're gonna sacrifice that tiny bit of performance that realistically a lot of us can't access anyway, but you're gonna get back a lot of comfort and better range. So in my mind, that's a bloody good trade-off. Anyway guys, almost time to drop the bike back. So thank you again for tuning in. If you've stayed this long, I really appreciate it. And um, if you haven't already, Feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. I do these test rides on a regular basis, so that'll notify you when the newest video comes out. Thanks again for watching. Speak to you soon.